China is planning a lunar base that could generate one megawatt of electric power, which is a hundred times more powerful than a similar device that NASA plans to put on the surface of the moon by 2030. China is developing a lunar colony on the moon's south pole that will be powered by a nuclear reactor that can sustain energy for 100 homes for over a year. And according to the South China Morning Post, the chief of the lunar project said, we are now developing a new system that uses nuclear energy to address the moon station's long-term high energy power demands. That's Wu Weiren, who's the chief designer of the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program. They didn't go into detail about what kind of reactor this will be, or also how they're going to get this reactor to the moon, and how are they going to cool it. And in some ways, this is a good move because you don't have to rely on outside sources for your energy. Nuclear energy is a continuous source, unlike wind or solar or hydropower. It'll provide energy for the habitats that the astronauts will be staying in, for the instrumentation that they'll be using. It'll also be generating power to generate oxygen and extract water and a lot of other things. They can charge their rovers if their rovers are electric and battery based. And China's lunar outpost will be complete by 2028. It's going to be a basic configuration and there will be a lander, a hopper, and an orbiter as well as a lunar exploration module, which is the rover. And it's all going to be charged with this nuclear reactor on the moon. The rover can be ridden by astronauts and can be much bigger than the two China operated on the moon so far, which are just little rovers. They're like little RC cars, kind of. And they're still rolling on the far side nearly four years after they touch down. And they said that nuclear energy could also power the hopper. So the hopper is going to be a device that takes off from the lunar surface many times and hops in and out of the crater's permanently shadowed area to look for water. This is a huge engineering plus. If you have a hopper, any sort of device that can go into places where humans can't basically rock climb down into a crater, it's super dangerous for people to go down there. So you have a robot go down there for you. And when it does its scouting, you can send it back, get it recharged by this nuclear power plant, and then take it out again the next day. And these hoppers are the first steps for people to produce water on the lunar surface. Because once the hopper knows exactly where the water ice is, people can go down there. They can mine this ice and bring it back to the facility, which is powered by a nuclear reactor, which can also produce and extract water from that ice. Nuclear energy will support the station's communications facilities and they'll remain in contact with Earth for missions from the Earth to the moon and also from the moon beyond to Mars and other deep space missions. So this is the main structure that they're going to be building out with the rover and the hopper and the nuclear energy system. But they're going to be expanding this system out. They're going to be building a bigger habitat for future astronauts to live and work on the surface of the moon. And they're going to be partnering with Russia to begin with, but they're also going to have other international partners, which are to be announced later. The head of the Lunar Outpost for China says China was the first country to propose building such a research station at the lunar South Pole. At a latitude of about 89 degrees south, there could be 180 consecutive days of light to sustain long operations for both instruments and astronauts. Now, they could use solar power for this, but they could also have continuous power with nuclear. So they could have an offset of nuclear and also solar running at the same time. Hey, if you could do me a quick favor, hit the like and subscribe buttons because YouTube will see that and they're going to start sending you more SpaceX, NASA and spaceflight content in the future. They're going to start recommending you other creators that you're going to be interested in. So please hit like and subscribe. Now let's get back to the content. This project was funded in 2019 by the Chinese government, and although technical details aren't available yet, and there's no launch date for this, the engineering design of the prototype machine was completed recently, and some critical components were shown off. Two scientists took part in the project, confirmed to the South China Morning Post this week. So this is a real thing. This is happening. 
and it's going to be going to the moon by 2030. So what do you think about China sending a nuclear reactor to the lunar South Pole? Hit me up in the comments. I want to have a discussion about this. I think this is an important topic because this is going to affect future lunar outposts. This is an ambitious project for any country. China has already sent a nuclear reactor to the lunar surface with a U-22 rover. Now this is a small reactor and that reactor keeps the lunar rover warm during those cold moon nights. And the first nuclear power device that was sent into orbit was called the SNAP-10A, which launched in 1965. It was 500 watts and they powered it down after about a month. So we know a little bit about this generator from a white paper that was released a little bit earlier. And some of the heat produced by this reactor would produce electricity and the rest would be dissipating into space to avoid a meltdown. And to solve this issue, the reactor uses a foldable structure like an umbrella to increase the total surface area of the waste heat radiators. And because of its compact size, this reactor would increase the temperature much higher than something on Earth, likely 2000 degrees Celsius at the core. It would use liquid lithium as a coolant for greater power generation efficiency. And according to this paper, China has everything in line. They have the industrial chain to produce all the components for this, and they have the complex manufacturing technology to get this job done. And China is no stranger to the moon. In the last 15 years, they've had a bunch of missions that have flown to orbit. They've touched down on the surface of the moon. They've actually had rock samples returned from the moon, and they've landed a spacecraft on the far side of the moon before anybody else. China isn't only developing this moon base, though. In the next 10 to 15 years, they're going to be doing asteroid detection and impact. They're going to be doing planetary exploration. And they're also going to have to build heavy lift vehicles. They're going to have to get something that's about four times bigger than what they have right now, four times more powerful than the rockets they have right now to do Mars and moon transport and to get people to the surface of the moon. And usually upgrading rockets to this scale takes a long time. It could possibly take decades for them to develop a reliable system to send people to the surface of the moon. But when they say 2028 or 2030, it's possible it's going to be in the 2040 region or maybe 2050 region. It takes a long time, like I said before. Now, NASA, we have the Artemis program the SLS rocket, the Orion capsule, and also Starship is being built in Boca Chica, Texas. So the U.S. is much closer than China is to be able to develop a lunar base station on the far side of the moon and on the lunar south pole. So let me know what you think in the comments. Is this going to happen by 2030? I'm doubtful but I'm hopeful that we can have some lunar exploration happening from not only the U.S., but other countries like China and Russia and, you know, people from all over the world should be discovering the lunar surface. We've already been there from the U.S. We did the Apollo program 50 plus years ago at this point. So going back there, a huge step for people to go from the Earth to the moon to Mars, and that's kind of what China is going after too. They're going after long duration space flight. They're going after people living and working on the lunar surface and also people transporting from the Earth to the moon and then from the moon to Mars too. So let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you enjoy this content. And also if you want other content that's similar to this, it's gonna help you out. So hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Hey, take a look up there. There's a couple links for you. There's one to hit subscribe and there's also one for a video uh, playlist. I think it's a playlist for the Artemis program. So check those out. That's it. I don't know how to end the video. <laughs> Gets, that's it. It's all. It's over. It's done. Links over there. Link over there. Playlist and a subscribe button. Awkward silence. Bye.